The movie begins with a narration from an old book recounting a time where Earth was dominated by menacing creatures such as werewolves, vampires, demons, and goblins. Goblins? As the centuries passed by, these fearsome creatures decided to change their way of life and became peace-loving beings. Some of them started living with humans undetected, while the others fled to various secret locations across the world. The scene then cuts to the present time, and we are introduced to a young vampire, Vlad, and his father, Barnabas, who are driving towards a magical town called Kralsfelden. It appears that the boy's father wants him to start his first year of school at a renowned magic school. Unfortunately, along the way, their navigation system stops working and they are lost in a deep forest. As they stop by a stone bridge, they are suddenly approached by a creepy old man, Quasimodo, who asks for their documents. Turns out that this old man has been serving as the guard of the bridge for over a millennium. He then opens a giant book and reads a prophet prophecy about Vlad, whom he claims is part of an ancient curse. After verifying their documents, Quasimodo helps them with their way to Kralsfelden. The father and son finally enter the magical town that seems to be of the medieval era. It's a small and unique town in the middle of nowhere. While driving around the streets, a cyclist suddenly comes in their way, causing Barnabas to hit the brakes in an emergency. The duo steps out to check the man's well-being and finds that one of the bicycle's wheels has mysteriously shrunk. Just then, a police officer shows up at the scene to investigate the incident. Vlad is seen wearing a dark crystal around his neck, which seems to be carrying out magic tricks on its own, such as changing the officer's hat. This explains how the bicycle's wheel suddenly got smaller. However, Vlad is completely unaware that his crystal is doing all of this. However, he has long suspected that it did something similar to his pee-pee. After sorting out the incident, Vlad and his father arrive at their new home, which is right above an antique shop. Vlad doesn't like the house as it's very old and feels that it's ready to crumble. Moreover, he is a bit nervous about his new school, so Barnabas comforts him, saying that there's nothing to worry about. By the time it gets dark, Barnabas finishes unpacking and arranging their place before putting his son to bed. A short while later, a strange man in a cloak appears in their house, startling Barnabas for a moment. This man introduces himself as a tax official and hands him a list of bills he must pay while he's in the town. Not even and goblins can get out of paying taxes. The following morning, Vlad wakes up to find his father, who seems to have stayed up all night tallying the bills. Barnabas then drops him off at school for his inaugural day. He then heads to the town hall to settle some of his unfinished work, promising to return back soon. As soon as Vlad enters the school premises, he comes across a group of bullies torturing another newcomer named Wolf. Thankfully, there's another group of girls, led by Faye, who save the two of them from the bullies. Soon after, Wolf befriends Vlad and introduces him to his parents, who sniff him since they are full-blown werewolves. <laughs> He smells like peanut butter. On the other hand, Barnabas arrives at the town hall and files a complaint against the list of bills that he received the previous night. Frau, an employee, informs him that the tax is mandatory for all new residents. Barnabas expresses that he is unable to afford such a huge amount and requests her to break it into installments. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted by the town's mayor, who asks Barnabas to sell the ancestral blood fragment worn by Vlad in order to settle their dues. Barnabas isn't sure about this as it belongs to his son, so he requests some time to think. Back at school, Vlad is waiting for his father to return when he's approached by a janitor, Hanapel, who suggests that he not miss the opening speech. Following this, the boy enters the main hall, where the school headmistress is delivering her speech to new students and their parents. The headmistress calls all the new students onto the stage and makes them stand in a line. Shortly after, Barnabas arrives and joins the other parents in the audience. The headmistress then waves a magical spell from her book, which transforms all the new students into their true forms. Wolf turns into an actual werewolf like his father, Faye into a fairy, and Vlad into a young vampire. And the bullies turn into little dildos. But soon after, the spell's effect fades away, and as a result, Faye falls on Vlad, causing him to sustain a minor injury. Vlad throws up when he witnesses blood dripping from his wound. Simultaneously, Wolf begins to cough and sneeze, as if he has suffered from an allergy. 
After school, the kids return home, embarrassed by the earlier incidents. It turns out that Wolf is allergic to fur, even though he's a werewolf, a fact that enrages his father. Similarly, Vlad, despite being a vampire, is sensitive to blood, and Faye is afraid of flying. Following this, we see a montage of all three magic kids on their beds, dealing with their own battles, as they've become the subject of ridicule at school. That night, Frau, who turns out to be a witch, arrives outside Vlad's house with an intention of stealing the blood fragment crystal. She uses her superpower to extend her hand, reaches out into Vlad's bedroom, and steals the fragment. She then returns back to the town hall and hands the crystal to the mayor. But to their surprise, the fragment mysteriously disappears from the mayor's hand and appears back in Vlad's room. This makes him realize that the blood fragment is protected by a recall spell and that it can be obtained only when its owner hands it over with his free will. The next day, when Vlad arrives at school, he sees the students watching a video of Faye falling onto him. Ah, Bootube. As he heads to the classroom, he is intervened by a group of bullies. They pretend to be covered in fake blood, causing him to throw up. Hannah Pell notices this and immediately fends off the bullies, berating them for their cruel behavior. However, Vlad has already had enough, and he decides to leave the town once and for all. As he makes his way through the forest, he meets Faye and Wolf, who are also trying to run away from the town. The trio then continues their journey together. After a while of walking, they come across the stone bridge where they are stopped by Quasimodo. He prevents them from going further. He asserts that they can't leave the town until they fulfill the prophecy of Kralsfelden. When the kids insist, Quasimodo turns into a giant troll in an attempt to intimidate them. But before he can inflict any harm to the children, Hanapel shows up and rescues them. After this, he takes them to his place and offers them some hot chocolate. During their conversation, Hanapel discloses his true identity as a wizard. While he goes to prepare some food, the kids grab a book from his closet, from which they learn about the Book of All Knowledge. Turns out that this special book contains all the instructions on fulfilling the prophecy. The kids realize that they can make their way out of the town if they manage to retrieve the Book of All Knowledge and fulfill the prophecy. But the only problem is that the book is hidden in a forbidden library. Just in case you didn't already think this was a Harry Potter ripoff. Armed with this knowledge, the three of them head towards the Forbidden Library. On their way, they talk to each other, sharing about themselves and their superpowers. At this point in time, we learn that Faye possesses a healing power, which becomes evident when she heals a dead plant. If she'd healed Vlad's wound earlier, she could have saved them all a lot of misery. Not long after, the trio arrives at the Forbidden Library and manages to enter secretly. Inside, they discover a map that can lead them to their desired book. However, the place is guarded by a black dog with red eyes. I'm surprised it didn't have three heads. Wolf manages to distract the dog by offering his food, allowing Vlad and Faye to proceed further. The two soon come across a deep abyss that must be traversed to reach the library. At this moment, Vlad uses his vampire sonar powers to locate the invisible pillars in the hole. This enables them to leap across and reach the other side. Elsewhere, Frau visits Barnabas and uses her love spell on him, making him comply with her instructions. She then directs him to persuade his son to sell the blood fragment. However, Barnabas informs her that Vlad ran away from school and has not returned home yet. Back at the library, Vlad and Faye notice that the book they're looking for is placed in a much higher compartment. The only solution is that Faye must use her wings to reach it. Despite her fear of heights, she nervously takes off and successfully retrieves the book. After this, the three rush to the exit, narrowly escaping the vigilant black dog. Then, they sit by a tree and proceed to read the book. It tells them a story of the evil Lord Lucifer, whose goal is to turn all the vampires, werewolves, and other monsters into evil and gain control over humans once more. However, they are unable to learn more as the page has been torn out from the book. Sensing that something bad is about to happen, the kids decide to be brave. Oh, never mind. They decide to alert their parents. On the other hand, the mayor tracks Vlad down with the help of Frau's magical mirror and learns about his access to the Book of All Knowledge. Furious, he orders Frau to do everything she needs and bring the blood fragment to him. Following this, she retains the reverse curse from her potion shelf and sends it after the three children. The spell quickly finds its way inside their bodies, which makes them speak exactly the opposite of what they're actually trying to say. As soon as Vlad arrives home, his position 
possessed father tries to persuade him to sell the blood fragment. Despite the boy's attempts to resist, the spell renders him incapable of doing so. As a result, he hastily rushes to his room and locks himself inside. Later on, the three friends chat in a group call, and Faye says that they've been cursed by the reverse spell. Now that they're unable to seek help from their parents, the trio vows to resolve the matter on their own. Later that night, Vlad delves into the Book of All Knowledge to gather as much information as possible, but he eventually dozes off. The following morning, when the group reunites, each of them reveals some valuable information that they have gathered. Putting everything together, they discover that the blood fragment has the power to reverse time, turning magical beings back to evil once again. To investigate further, they head to the town hall. However, they must navigate past the police officer's cabin to gain entry. They then devise a strategy. Wolf and Faye distract the officer while Vlad infiltrates. Inside, Vlad's crystal is drawn towards the tower, guiding his way up. Upon reaching there, he witnesses a giant array of crystals, and the blood fragment turns out to be its missing piece. As his crystal comes closer to the giant one, the time starts reversing, changing his backpack into the older version before anything can happen further. Like his Hotmail account reverting to blood for me 69 Vlad grabs his fragment and runs away. Simultaneously, the mayor and Frau detect the child's presence and rush to investigate the tower, but find nobody. The mayor then discloses that he has been amassing crystal fragments for a thousand years, needing only the final piece now. Here, it's revealed that the evil Lord Lucifer is none other than the mayor himself. Since the time reversed back to a moment earlier, the Book of All Knowledge also reverts to its original state, restoring the torn pages. As a result, the three children continue reading about the prophecy. They not only uncover the mayor's true identity, but also discern his sinister plan. On the solar eclipse day, which happens to be today, he intends to cast the Dark Crystal's light upon the townspeople, making everyone his slaves. Upon learning this, Vlad realizes that the only way to save this town is by taking the crystal away from the mayor, so he decides to leave forever. Wolf and Faye want to accompany him, but he refuses, emphasizing that they must stay to protect the town. With what skills, you might ask? I have no idea. In the next scene, the trio heads towards the stone bridge, and after bidding a final goodbye to his friends, Vlad proceeds to cross it. This time, Quasimodo also permits his departure, but in an unexpected twist, the evil mayor shows up and holds Faye hostage. He blackmails Vlad to bring the blood fragment to the tower within an hour or else he'll kill his friend. Left with no choice, even though Faye's life is clearly not worth the end of the world, Vlad and Wolf make their way to the tower to save Faye. Once there, Vlad surrenders the blood fragment to Lucifer, releasing Faye from his custody as the atmosphere turns dark due to the solar eclipse. The mayor fits the piece into the giant crystal, emitting a red light. But before the crystal can awaken, the blood fragment vanishes, returning back to Hannah Pell. At this moment, Vlad discloses that he had entrusted the fragment to Hannah Pell before coming to the tower. This fills the mayor with rage, and he attacks the trio one by one. He knocks out Vlad and then throws Faye off the tower. Seeing this, Wolf gets so furious that he transforms into a giant werewolf and beats up the evil mayor. However, his strength doesn't last long, as his allergies soon kick in and he reverts back to his human form. But before the mayor can launch his attack, Faye returns and uses her power to heal Vlad. Following this, Vlad turns himself into a vampire and walks forward to confront the mayor. The boy uses his speed to trick Lucifer into shooting the array of dark crystal, which rebounds at him. This causes the mayor to transform into a crystal that bursts immediately. Amazing. With the threat finally neutralized, the three young heroes walk out of the town hall. Hannah Pell approaches them and returns turns the blood fragment to Vlad. The movie ends as the three best friends walk away, discussing a name for their group.